I have done some Gantt chart videos in the past and also some task tracking videos in the past, but for this time I wanted to do something very fast for you to do. So let's get started straight away. So I've just had copy and pasted all the column headings so I can go through them with you one by one. As we progress, I can explain the meaning of the column and, and how it's been calculated. So first of all, in blue are the things that are manually input. Those ones will be all calculations. So let's get started. First, that's a description of the task. So you could put task number one. And then the estimate. So the estimate, I, you know, you can put days, I suppose, or you could put hours or months. Um, as long as the number is consistent, I will do it with days. So for this one, for instance, so let's put 10 days. And here we'll be showing how much is completed. So you can put 50%, for instance. In a, another video, I say I don't really like the, the percentage. I'd rather give uh, the amount of days outstanding. So that's something that you can uh, do uh, later on if you prefer. But for the time being, I will just keep a uh, percentage. Those are calculated. How much is done when you do 50% of a task? That has 10 days, so you multiply the estimate per the completion, and that gives you five days. And how much is left to do? So that's very easy. So you do the estimate less what has been done. Wingdings is used to show the tick on the chart. That will show only when the task is completed. So what we have is if this completion is equal to one, then we will show this symbol. Otherwise, we'll show nothing. So now we need to go and fish for that uh, symbol. So what we do, insert symbol. Uh, we go to Wingdings and the one that we want is the tick. We have the tick here. We'll insert it. Okay, so it's ins inserted at the wrong thing. So what I should do is I will want to put it there. So that's it. So once the the completion is 100%, it, show, it should be showing you this symbol here. And now what we can do is to change this whole column and put it into the Wingdings font. Wingdings font. Not started. So this in this I calculated the task itself is started or not. So that's an easy one as well. If the completion is equal to zero, then not started. One, otherwise zero, not started. If the completion is greater than zero, and if it's less than 100%, then I will put one, otherwise I'll put zero. So here I'll put one when the task has started but not completed. For the completions, if the completion is equal to one, then I put one here. Otherwise, I put zero. So this is a dummy for a tick. So I will, it will come to light later why we use this. And for the moment, please follow me blindly. Let's just put one for this one and four for the other one. So let's just create more tasks. Task 10. And uh, let's just drag everything down here. And after we'll play with the, we'll give more, more estimates. So it could be anything 4, 44, 60, 20. Let's get several completion status. Let's put 20, maybe 40 here. Okay, so we've seen that uh, the wingding seems to be working. When I have 100%, I have a tick here. Uh, the field will be used in a chart. It will make more sense. So this task list is not meant to be displayed. The way we display it is we use the dashboard to display uh, our progress. So this is more the data entry. So this is it. This is all the thing. So this is obviously the description shouldn't change. The estimate shouldn't change. The completion there. So this is where you come to update it. All those should change. This is this has been input once. I have input only 10 tasks, but you could input only four tasks or 20 tasks. Uh, it's just uh, very flexible, I suppose, once you've created the chart. Let's continue. What I've done is I've numbered the colons in the way I would want them to show on the chart. So trust me with this as well. So this one first, this one the done, second, left to do third, and the dummy with tick as a fourth. Now, what we want to do is we want to include these four columns in our chart. 
and obviously the description ones. So the way I do it, I don't even need to, to take the, the headings here, is I take all those, select all those, then I select the two here, then I select the two here. You can either do that or do it one by one, but um, if you can do them all at once, it will save you some time. And here I insert chart and the type of chart I want to insert is the horizontal one and the second one here, stacked bar. And now we already have a good looking chart. <laughs> well, uh, we have a chart. Those dummy fields here will come into play very soon. I go into select data and I want to change the order of those. I want to put the dummy for percentage completion. I want to put this one first. So it's all done here. It's all done properly. I just need to do a little bit of formatting. Now the formatting, the reason why I wanted to have this one here it was to show the tick. I want to show this at the end of the bar where the job is finished. So I click on that row on the, on the dummy for tick. And what I want to do is I want to add a label to this. Add label, and it's going to give me the wrong label. Uh, it's going to show me one as label, but it's not that that I want. I want label from another uh, column. So I go format data label, and here I remove the value. That's one. If I click on value here, that removes it. And I want to take a value from cell, so that allows you to select a few cells to give you this instead, to give you the label instead. So what I do is I go to the windings, and now hopefully it all makes sense and I press OK and now we have this strange character here. So what I want to do now is I want to go and confirm this is using the wingdings so wingdings and now we have the tick. So it doesn't look very exciting for the moment but uh, as we as we format it it will look better later on. So we have the tick. I uh, select again this and what I wanted to do was to have uh, I'll go to format and the shape fill. I just put no fill. This way the tick will be standing on its own at the end. So that is done for this one. Now the first one, what I wanted to do with the first one, more or less the same, uh, but instead of having the tick, I want to have the percentage completed. So I do the same principle. I add label. It's going to give me the one I don't want, which is okay because after I can click on it, I can go to Format Data Labels and I take value from cell as well and I select this value. This and then there is shows me two because it's still showing me the dummy for completion. Now I remove it and it's showing me this. Now I select, I'm trying to select the full colon there, not the label. Okay, I've selected it. And I want to do the same. I want to do the shape fill. I want to have no fill. So I can just show this. So that's it. So what I want to do now is I want to, to format the chart. So I have preselected some colors here that I, uh, that I liked. So you can obviously choose the Windows color if you want, but I just wanted to have a bit of variety. So I copied this, uh, this from uh, another color scheme that I liked. So for the background here, for the task completed, I have this and for the color left to be done, I have those. And I'll show you how, how I do it, just in case you don't know how to do it. So you click on the chart, shape field, more colors, customs, and here is I copy the hex here. So that's it. Now to allow me to see a bit clearly, so the, there are some that I'll do in white. So I click on this axis labeled and I put white and I may even put bold a little bit. Same for the percentage, white, bold. And I'll see after about the, the scale of this. Uh, I don't really want to show the days because this is supposed to be high level. Uh, the chart title, uh, I don't think I need this obvious I'm trying to be a little bit minimalist I click on the grids and I just make sure that you have selected the grids otherwise going to remove the old chart and I remove the grids as well and I will add some white so this the same oh, I don't think you want to do this as well <laughs> so this this is very minimalist now uh, but we'll add some some things on the on the left hand side later on there you go. So just in, in order to separate them, I like to put a little bit of, uh, of outline in white. So 
So we have the ticks, we have everything. So in order to do the left-hand side of the chart, I need to do something now. I need to uh, do some calculation. So I calculate uh, the overall estimate of all my tasks. So I'll just put here, where is auto sum here. So I'll calculate the, the total of this, uh, the total that has been done, the total that's left to do, and then that allows me to calculate the percentage. And here the same. 131 out of 235, I can put that in percentage. Uh, and then I will calculate. So this is to tell me the amount of tasks that are completed, uh, some that have not started at all. So uh, for the moment I have none not started, so I need to add some, this, and then I calculate the same. It started, drag this along, 244, okay. So now what do I do with this? So I would like to show this as on like 49.51. I'm just going to put it a bit more completed so it doesn't... Uh, I just select those two fields, insert, trying to find a bit of a pie here. This pie looks okay. Save you the repetitive task. What I've done here, I have uh, filled the chart with one of the pre-selected colors that we had. Then I clicked on the series and I format it as well using a shape field as, as we did for the chart. And finally, I just simply added the data labels. So now I will be formatting the data label. I want to be a bit more explicit. Select first the completed one. You do percentage and you see completed here. So it stays with it. You add it. Clearer, and, th and then you select the other one uh, instead of completed. You you got it. You just put percentage. Left to do. That is it. Okay. Chart title, I can put the overall work completion because this is just the amount of days. This is not the, the percentage completion of each individual task. It's overall work completion. This press on it. it. Now the other chart that I wanted to do was the, the amount of tasks that are completed or not. I suppose I could do this instead. I select the headings, I select this, I insert. I want a different type of chart to show a bit of variety. So let's just take this one. Uh, and then after you left the formatting. So if I add the data labels, I can click and format data labels. So take me here. So value from sales. So the category name. So let's uh, do, do it this way. It's a little bit different just to show you. If you feel this is not visible enough, you can you can still manipulate this. Make it maybe a tiny little bit clearer. You remove this, that is not required anymore. Uh, you put a beautiful chart title, like task completion. for the back of that shelf. What you can do as well, if you want, don't want to have to fill those gaps, is you, you select a generous amount of cells, put it into the background color of the charts, looks the same here. And this chart, I need to remove the format, JPEG line, and it, I think from there on, it's a matter of test. Uh, what I have also uh, as, a, as optional is I like to add uh, some, some icons. So you go into icons and uh, what is a good symbol of something that is completed. So I have imported those two things. So straight away I'm going to put them into, I'm going to put them into white. here as a decoration and then this one I can put it here right 
So you can either put them here, just or you can put them smaller. Uh, but uh, for this, I'm just going to put here, and it's going to go to graphic format, graphics, formatory, and I'm going to send it backwards. Ensure that you have the chart has no field, and then you can click on the on the flag itself and send it backward to have it behind. Same for this. So, what do you think? Uh, you might not like it. You might want to remove this. You might want to remove this. You can either have it like this, or I think it's always good to have a little bit of graphics, but you could just have them smaller, maybe. So this is it. Um, I was planning it to be a very quick one, but uh, the presentation is very important. So once you present it this way, it looks like you have done some work. You're showing that you're on top of things. It looks like you've done some work. You, have, you keep a very precise track. You know, there's nothing worse than someone comes uh, to give you an update and you just have a couple of scribbles in a notebook. If you show this, yes, that's good. He's, he's on top of things, that's fine. Okay, so uh, regarding the color scheme, I will tell you because this video is already longer than I wanted it to be. I didn't want to uh, spend too much time explaining some, some details to you. Is I will I will do another video where I show you how you can integrate other color schemes into Microsoft Excel. Okay, I'm going to close this. Thanks for watching. Hope it was not too long. I'll see you in my next video. Please subscribe. I'll do plenty of those.